find yourself in a bad situation, you're gonna know just a little bit more than you knew before you hit that button. seems like the society is really getting shaky and kind of out of control. I think it's important that we're going to jump forward and show you this technique. Thank you for tuning in. Capital LAF Space Film Fest. If you like any of these videos, hit that like button, subscribe, and you'll get notifications every time I post a self-defense video. Capital LAF Space Film Fest. If you do get the chance and you have the opportunity to take some self-defense lessons, there's a lot of good schools out there. There's a lot of nationwide places that you go. They're regimented. You're going to get in there and there's going to be a lot of other students and you're going to do the same thing over and over and over again. But it does lead to a great result. You'll go from a white belt, you know, a green belt. They work all the way up to a red belt, a brown belt. and or you'll be awarded a black belt if you can go that far. If you have that chance, or even if you know somebody, an acquaintance that is good at self-defense, say, hey man, you mind if you teach me a few lessons? Anything that you can do to improve your fighting ability is gonna help you in this day and age. I, I got a feeling if you stick with it, it'll be one of the best things you'll ever have done. You know, people invest a lot of money college education. That education will then make them money. If you invest some money in self-defense, it can save you a lot. That's a pretty big return that you get for that money that you put in. Contact your local group. Get in the newspaper, get on Google, search around, find out who's good, who's not, and get yourself involved in programs. And in fact, a lot of police forces will offer classes every now and then on a self-defense night or something. Go ahead and, if you get the chance, go ahead and go. Every little thing you learn is going to help you. This right here is an Escriba stick. Um, this is what I was trained at in Shotokan Karate. Required to learn a weapon. It could be a, a weapon, a, many weapons of choice. I like this one. This appealed to me right off the bat. And since then, I've got kind of a collection. You know, I'll be out hiking in the woods and walking down the beach. And there'll be a certain stick or something that'll come up and, I'll, and instantly in my mind it's like, oh, that's a nice extremist stick. I would like to have that. Now pick it up, take it, carve it, do some things. With uh, it. This one's pretty cool right here. As you can see, it's got a face in it. And uh, actually this used to be a hiking staff at one time, but I've cut it down and I've sanded it off. Perfect weapon. And it's the one that I'm trained in. And it's the one I'm gonna show you. You have this in your car, okay? It's a piece of wood. One mistake that people do make, they'll carry a baseball bat in your car. It's my understanding, if you carry a baseball bat in your car, go ahead and throw a ball and glove in there too. Because if it gets messy and you've got to get out and you've got to use that thing, lawyers get involved and it, gets, it just gets out of control in court, a baseball bat can be considered a deadly weapon. This here's a piece of wood, okay? A piece of wood I picked up on the ground, threw it in the car, way more than just a piece of wood. Once you learn to use them, they're everywhere. You find a piece of wood like this everywhere. A few years ago, I left the 4-H Center. It was late at night. Watched tractor pools, so I'm walking. I found myself, because it was such a late night, I found myself starting to go through these lower parking lots that there wasn't anybody there, and it was dark. Well, I just happened to walk by actually an exhibit guy. He had a mill that he was cutting oak and stuff. And I looked down, he had a bunch of scraps laying there, and guess what he had? Stick just like that. So I went from being hand-to-hand -hand combat to having a weapon with me. That's what's nice about a stick like this. They're everywhere. Even if you didn't have one, you could probably find something that would that would work just as well. A couple things about the stick. Number one, if I'm gonna fight with this stick, lesson number one, we learned. I've already got my stance. I'm not standing like this, I've got my stance. The difference is I only have one hand free. So that hand is gonna go up just like normal. So where's my weapon gonna go? Back here. One of the main reasons it's gonna go back here, I am not gonna set up and fight like this because I'm basically handing you my weapon. Here you go, if you can grab it, you can have it. All right, not like this. 
in order to get this weapon you're gonna have to come through several things you're gonna come through strikes elbow kick there's several things you're gonna come through even to get to my stick that's important keep your stick back here don't let somebody grab your weapon from you Another thing about the fighting, the grip. Important that I have this much on the bottom of my grip. That is a weapon in itself. I don't want to hold it like this, and obviously I don't want to hold it here in the middle. You have your grip like this, and the reason for that is, let's say somebody comes up and grabs you from behind. Somebody comes up, boom, puts a big bear hug, and you've got it. Right away, I have a weapon that I am going to be able to come back, <clears throat> and start, just start rocking on their hip bone. Bam, bam, bam. That's important that you're gonna have something because if somebody does get you from behind, remember the first thing they're gonna do is they're gonna grab you from behind and they're gonna pick you up. So as soon as you feel those arms come around you, another thing you do is you drop, you get heavy. Just get heavy because you are going to instantly throw their back out or throw their balance way off because they are not expecting you to do that. Grab you, <clears throat> you get heavy, Rock them a couple times here. I can just bake. come around, switch hands, rock them in the face here, rock them back this way. You know, there's so many things that I can do with this stick to get that person off of me. Once I break that grip, let's say I have rocked them several times. They still are holding on. That's when I take the stick and I take it right up next to my chest, take it like this, grab my other hand. Break them. Okay, come up. <clears throat> just break. Them. And as soon as I can break that grip, there's no way they're going to be able to hold on when I'm torquing down like that on their arm. So that comes up like this. I grab it, break it. As soon as I break it, you better believe I'm coming around. That end right there. That's not going to end good for them. At all. So I'm going to wrap this up. Get your stick. I'd say this is about an inch, inch and a quarter in diameter. It needs to be out of some kind of a good piece of wood, bare minimal oak. If you get on the internet and you Google Eskrima sticks, you'll see what they're made out of. Some real tough bamboo. You know, you want something that's not going to break on you. When you start smacking this thing around, you want a strong piece of wood. What I'm going to show you, once you get your stick, this is the move that I want you to practice. What's important is, can't stress this enough. This is in no means child play. Okay? okay. If you're going to seriously learn this, you have to know that you are taking on the responsibility. This is only to be used in the case of life or death, great bodily harm. If you, family, somebody vulnerable that you have to protect, if you use this on a buddy or you use this recklessly, you're going to end up in some problems. Legal problems for sure. Take that in mind, what I'm showing you is serious stuff. So here we go. Here is my basic plan of attack. This is where I've got to get out of here. This person is going to kill me. I have to take this person out. If nothing else, there's more than one here. There's a few other coming. I've got a long road to go before I survive this, so this person has got to get eliminated now. And that doesn't necessarily mean death, but it means I'm going to hurt them. I'm going to hurt them bad now. So here we go. Stance lined up. Strike number one. right on the thigh. Not expecting it. Everybody is going to expect for you to hit them in the head. Hit them up high. No. Your first blow whoo, is going to be cracking it hard against that thigh. That's going to be followed up quickly. By you. Crack them on the thigh. Come on across. Crack them on the other one. What's that going to do to them? Oh, the first hit. Oh, the second hit. Maybe they got body armor on or something. They didn't feel it. Not your best case scenario at all, but it's possible. They may have something like that on. But chances are they don't. They're not going to be a 300 pound steel person that's not going to feel that blow. Chances are that is going to hurt like hell when you do that. Boom. Bam, bam. 
And even before I make that first move, I'm probably gonna do this. Throw the sight up here. And this is what you're watching, magician. Woo, choo, choo. Okay, okay. Crack, crack. That's step one. All right, step two. If you notice, I get excited about this because it's it's exciting stuff, but it's intense and you gotta get like, mm. If you're gonna use this stuff, you gotta be ready. Can't be a sheep, can't be devoured by the wolves. Get out there, learn this stuff, get trained up, protect others if you can. Bam, so, bam. At that point right there, my next move is die, die. Now here comes the next move. Right across the face, right there. You've hit them so fast that their hands have probably dropped down to try to block or protect from getting hit again here, which has opened up this entire area right here. One, two, crack. That's the third strike. Strike number four, you're coming down, you're spinning it up, you're going high, and you're coming down, pop on top of the head. One, two, three, pop on top of the head. Bam! Maybe at this point they're still standing. And, you know, they could be a super guy. They could be on a drug so strung out that it may not be affecting them like it should. Cops run into that all the time. People get tasered and some of them, man, they just keep on fighting. Here we go. One, two, crack. Up. One, two, three, four. You probably have done some good there. And when I say you've done some good, it means you probably have saved your life. You probably are going to be able to get out of this situation, hopefully. I haven't showed you step five yet. And step five, if one, two, three, four haven't done it, step five is almost surely to be the finishing blow. As the waiver, as, as you should know, do not use this unless your life is threatened, death or great bodily harm, or you are protecting somebody whose life is threatened by death or great bodily harm. hit here on the side of the neck, even doing that sends little trembles through my body. That is a devastating blow right there. So you can imagine somebody has already endured thigh, thigh, face, bleeding, head, cracked. And now you come around the side And you do a strike right on the neck. That's what this weapon's used for right here. You keep practicing that over and over and over and over again. Eventually, it's going to become... Practice, practice, practice. Self-defense is like boiling water. You keep the heat on it, you're gonna stay good, you're gonna stay focused, right. it's gonna become a habit. Turn that heat down, forget about it, walk away, turn on the tube, not mess with it, <sighs> those plastic. Keep practicing, keep after it, and hopefully you're never gonna have to use this. You know, that's my goal. I don't, I don't ever wanna use this on, on, on another human being. Speaking of which, I tell you what, I go up and camp on Lake Superior and way, way up there on the shoreline where I'll go into areas that are just, you don't see anybody. You can hike all day long and never see a soul out and, there. Uh, and I carry a stick like this with me, a fighting stick. Or I carry a, a little bit longer of a hiking staff with me. I've got one of those I made. 
and they're pretty good for animals too. Good lord, if a big wolf come out or um, a mountain lion come out and, and want to be aggressive, you know, you better believe I'm, I'd be very glad I've got that in front of me. Now, I don't know if I'm going to be able to survive that or not, an attack like that, but I tell you what, I got a hell of a lot better chance of it not happening. Ah, thank you. Thank you for dropping in. Capital L A F Space Film Fest. I really appreciate it. I hope these things are helping you. I can share this knowledge I had my entire life, and now I've got this channel going, and I'm able to put these videos out. If I can help people, that makes me feel so much better. And who knows, maybe, just maybe, saving somebody's life. Maybe you learn this, something happens, and you're able to get out and protect yourself and your family. God, that makes me feel good. Practice, 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 practice. Practice. Capital L A F Space Film Fest. Thank you. Thank you. I will see you on the next video.